Hey everybody, Ben here from DMC Films and Cinderblock Studios, and today we're talking about Fugitive Colors. What are they, why do they matter, and why should you care? That and more coming up. <laughs> so Fugitive Colors, in short, are the opposite of a light fast color. They usually have a light fast rating of 3 or 4. Fugitive Colors are known to change in hue, color intensity, or color value uh, just over time. There are a number of them out there, but the most common ones are Alizarin Crimson and Van Dyke Brown. And their low light fast rating and fugitiveness uh, is most common in watercolor paints. So if there's all these negative things about fugitive colors, why would an artist even want to use them? First is the factor of pure pigments versus hues. As mentioned in my videos before, a hue paint is a mix of colors to replicate another color. So, for example, Alizarin Crimson Hue contains no Alizarin Crimson. It usually contains uh, an alternative red, a blue, and a black in order to replicate the look of traditional Alizarin Crimson. Now, some artists don't really care for this in general because they want a pure pigment paint, specifically because pure pigment paints have a distinct way that they mix colors, and that, is co that distinct way is very consistent. Hue paints tend to be a little stranger and don't hold their intensity quite as well. Now when I say not holding their intensity, I don't mean over time, I mean when mixed with other colors, specifically white. Liquitex actually has a really good video on this, you can check it out over here, specifically about how when mixing a paint that is a hue and a paint that is a pure pigment paint, both trying to be the same color, uh, one mixed with white and the other one mixed with white, kind of create two different colors. And that's what I mean by a color being a hue and not being able to hold its intensity the same way that a pure pigment does. So in short, a hue paint will lose some color in intensity over the course of mixing with colors, but it'll hold that uh, color that it does have over time, while a fugitive color will hold its uh, intensity while mixing, but won't hold that intensity over time. Secondly, we have the fact that artists, in most cases, aren't really concerned with the longevity and the look of their piece in the long term. Most artists want things to look good now, not really so much concerned with how it's going to look 100 years from now. Now some artists are going to prefer pure pigments anyway, so they'll go ahead and use a fugitive color in place of a hue. Additionally, other artists will really want to use just strong historical colors, and Lizard and Crimson has a strong historical uh, value in art history, and so there's a really interesting connection between artists using that color today and artists that used it hundreds of years ago. And there's actually a final category of artists in here that you may not have considered. It's the artist who actually wants their paint to change in color over time. A lot can be said about specifically choosing fugitive colors and knowing in advance that they're going to change a little bit and that painting will become more and more complex as time goes on. So while fugitive colors may have a few positive sides, why are they still made at all, given all of the negative effects they can do both to a, a painting or a color mix or any of that other stuff? First of all, permanence is not required by every artist. Uh, not every artist wants their piece to last a hundred years. There is a lot to be said about things like body painting, so, uh, street art, uh, even sort of temporary exhibits that you know aren't going to last, and maybe uh, even if you're a beginner, and you know you're going to paint over a piece, or unstretch it, or just get rid of the piece entirely, permanence may not be a factor for you, and that's not necessarily something that you want to take into account. So for that reason, paint manufacturers know that sometimes a color like Alizarin Crimson or Van Dyke Brown matters more to artists than uh, using a paint that is going to last forever and ever and ever. Additionally, the shorter term brilliance, hue, and intensity of a fugitive color often tends to be uh, more so than that of a lot of mixed colors or even alternative pure pigment paints. Additionally, there is a lot to be said about using a fugitive color just as a mixing color. Yeah, it may not hold that bright intensity, but maybe it doesn't need to because you're mixing it with other colors. For example, my uh, watercolor red uh, currently is Alizarin Crimson. Uh, did, I didn't buy it specifically because it's fugitive color, I bought it because I thought it'd be, this would be a great mixing color, specific, specifically for making browns with a more light fast green. So to wrap things up, fugitive colors as well as light fast ones certainly have their place both in historical and modern paintings. As your skills and knowledge of paint and painting improve, keep an eye out for these colors and they just may change your perception on what is possible to do with paint. 
Be sure to subscribe for more art videos like this one if you're not already to the channel. And this has been from DMC Films and Cinderblock Studios. See you guys next time.